Well, I wanted to do another video on the cap M or the capital asset pricing model again today. I want to talk specifically about the capital market line. Now I have some other videos out there. You can check them out by following these links here, where we talk about cap M in general, talk about the security market line, which is different than the capital market line today, the capital market line, but let's first remember that cap M is all about the risk and return trade-off, right? So uh, risk is bad. We don't want that. We want less risk and return is good. We want more return. And we'll, we'll trade off there in some way such that we'll take on more risk if we get more return. All right, so in a general, we've been talking about beta. Today, we're gonna go back to standard deviation as a measure of risk. Let's consider, for example, that we have a risky asset out there, has a return or an expected return of 20% and a risk or standard deviation, not beta, of 15%. So that would be represented on this chart here. We can see uh, that it is right there at 20% expected return and 15% risk. Uh, that, that's our return uh, profile. Now, if we introduce a risk-free asset, this will change things. So let's suppose we have a risk-free asset that has a return of 3% and a risk of zero because it is risk-free. Now we can combine uh, these two assets to create different uh, return and risk profiles. All right, so we could say, for example, here, we're gonna have our expected return is gonna be equal to the weight of the risky asset times its return of 20% plus the weight in the risk-free asset times its return of 3% to come up with an expected return. So for example, if we just did 100% in that risky asset, uh, we're gonna have a return of 20%. And that's gonna put us right here on this chart. Now we could say, well, let's go 75% uh, of the risky asset uh, times this return and 25% of the risk-free asset, that's going to get us a return of 15.75%. Uh, this is basically where you are, you know, investing in the risk-free asset. We can also borrow at, uh, at, at the risk-free asset. So here we can say, let's put, let's borrow 15% uh, at the risk-free rate, and then we can invest 115% in the risky asset. That's going to give us a return of 22.55. Now, uh, just because these are all linear. I just want to point out that standard deviation is also linear in this case because the risk of the risk-free asset is zero. We don't have to worry about uh, the extra terms in there, correlation and whatnot, because uh, the risk is zero for the risk-free asset. So if we just do this for all different uh, proportions of the risky asset, we're going to end up with a line like this. So on this line here, we can see over here, that's 100% of the risk-free asset. Uh, this point right here is that 75% of the risky asset, 25% in the risk-free asset and this point way up here, that is 115% in the risky asset where we borrowed 15% to do that. Uh, so that, that's this is called the capital allocation line because we're allocating different amounts uh, to the risky asset and different amounts to the risk-free asset. Now, I want you to keep in mind that the risk-free asset is important here. So if we change the risk-free rate, then that changes the line, the slope is different. Uh, this is important. Uh, let's say we had another asset we wanted to consider, and it was right here. It had, you know, a expected return of around twelve to thirteen, and it had a, you know, a risk of 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 six. Now, this particular asset, if the risk-free rate is back at three, then this asset dominates uh, the original asset. But if the risk-free rate is at ten, then it is, you know, inferior to the other asset. So just keep that in mind that the risk-free rate is very important here. So how does this turn into the capital market line? Well, if we were to consider all the risky assets out there and combine them in different ways uh, and look at their returns, we would get a bunch of plots like this. And we end up with this thing called the efficient frontier. We're not gonna get into the efficient frontier today, but these are basically the portfolios that have the best risk and return trade-off, okay? This is the efficient frontier. Now we're gonna again introduce the risk-free rate. We're gonna say this at 3% here. And we're going to just draw a tangent line to the efficient frontier. It's going to look something like this. And where that touches, that is called, that's going to be the market portfolio. So the capital market line is a special case of the capital allocation line where we're using this particular market portfolio. Again, keep in mind, the risk-free rate is important. If we have that risk-free rate of 10% and draw a tangent line, then the market portfolio is gonna be a different market portfolio. Uh, but that is the capital market line. That is a special case capital allocation line where we're using the risk-free rate, the efficient frontier, and we're drawing a tangent line to figure out what the market portfolio is. That line then becomes the capital market line. Now, 
this line, both the capital allocation line and the capital market line are, is basically the maximum sharp ratio you can get in that environment. Uh, but I want you to, we, to go back to that beta concept. So uh, we're gonna go and look at beta in one of the next ep, ep, uh, videos so we can think about how beta and sharp ratio interact uh, because you know we, we're looking at both standard deviations and we're looking at beta. We're gonna tie it all together uh, in a subsequent video. Also wanna at some point here talk about some of the assumptions in CAPM which are not particularly valid in real life. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm Brian Kozlowski. Thanks so much for listening.